Hello! In this video I will be showcasing how the XAM app works and what it exactly is. So the XAM app is basically a software wallet which exists on your phone. So it supports so it's supported on the App Store and Google Play, so on Android and iOS. So basically so I will be showcasing it with Android and you just go to the Play Store, look for the XAM app and then install it. So that part is very easy. It is a non-custodial wallet, meaning that you have full control over the account and the developers, so who made that app, do not. So it's a not it's a non-custodial wallet. So we can see here, so now at the starting screen, we just click it start, and now we can set up a passcode. That passcode is only important for that device. So uh, it's not linked to your XRP account. It's just a passcode for uh, when, which you will use in your device for signing. So I will be just using now one two three one two three four five six. Please choose a better passcode. Um, right. So it's explaining that the XAM app is non-custodial, meaning that you have full control of your account and nobody else does. So. Some I, I, I use I, I'm using that app a lot. So on my phone, I've got multiple accounts with them, or basically with myself. But the app, like I said, is managing that, and it works like a charm. So the next part is that we should keep our secret safe. So don't tell your mnemonic or six times eight um, numbers matrix. And right, so transactions are permanent. As soon as you make a transaction on the XRP blockchain, it's permanent. You can't roll that one back. So your funds live on the XRP ledger. Yep, so it's not, like I said, it's a non-custodial wallet, meaning that they don't um, manage your funds. It's just stored on the XRP ledger. You shouldn't share a secret. So if you do that, the other person can gain full access to your account. So don't do that. And when you change your phone, you will have to import um, the secret into. So you will have to import accounts using a secret or for six times eight matrix. So right, and if you have questions, you can contact the support. So in the meantime, that is basically the website. You can also check it out there. And right, like I said, it's non-custodial. It's very important to understand. Right, so now we're ready, so then you should read the terms of terms of service, how it works basically, we'll accept now, and now we're in the, at the interface. Now you are able to add an account and just import, if you already have an XRP account, or basically an mnemonic, whatever, you can import that one. So if you click on import, full access, you can import an account, and then also sign transactions for that account on your phone. So for example, if you have the secret number, so 8 times 6 or the family seed to your account or an mnemonic. This could be also a mnemonic from another hard, uh, software wallet or also hardware wallet. So if you for example use Exodus or Atomic Wallet or any other wallet where you know the mnemonic and have an XRP account there, then you can just enter the mnemonic here and then import it. The same works with the family C, so you probably don't know that one, so most people don't. And uh, now we will also then later talk about the six times so eight times six uh, numbers matrix. But for now, I will be creating a new account uh, using the XAM app. So the thing here is the XAM app supports a uh, eight times six numbers matrix. That's basically standard. You can see it here. We'll link it later. Uh, so users have it simpler to write it down. So it's basically just it's it translates to a secret. So you can you can use that and translate it to a family seed later. So that's how it basically works. So oh, I hope I explain it correctly. We'll have to check it later. Uh, but it's just a new st also a new standard that is supported. So, and right, so that's basically, you will have to jot all these numbers down. So that is the secret access to this account we're creating right now. So jot all these numbers down so you don't forget. And so I will be jotting it down here. So one, four, three. So you should be writing it down on paper or digitally and encrypted, but never stored it by online. And right, so let's continue. So we're at the first row down. I will write the second row down. Then I will write down the third row, 6625, six, then let's continue here, 274075, oh, let's continue, I will again, you will jot that one here down on the piece of paper and maybe create multiple backups or whatever, 
Force 9, 8, 9, 7. Then we've got 6, 3, 8, 0, 1, 0. And the last row, 4, 8, 1, 5, 8, 3. Okay, so now we're done. Now you have to re-enter it and prove that you have jotted it down. So this is the only exhausting part because you have to uh, choose number with the, with plus or minus. That's that's a little bit yeah. It takes a while. So six. So we, I will have to do it for all rows in for uh for the first so the first time. Afterwards, you don't have to do it ever again. But it's just to prove that you really wrote it down and you know your secret numbers. So three, eight, three. Oh, okay, <coughs> eight, three. So I've got second row here. So yeah, it just takes a while. So we'll be not cutting the video off because people might get confused. So I'm I'm re redoing the video so things get a little bit more clearer or clearly how everything works. So I will continue here. So you have to do it for all rows. So you, like I said, you're basically pro proving that you know all the numbers um, right. And like I said, the XAM map, I really like using it. It's very intuitive, very fast. The UI is also great and it's very easy to handle. So I use it myself a lot. So I'm also recommending products which, which I use myself or have used and know how they work. So let's continue here. Then we've got the sixth row. I will just copy it to five, four, nine. So right now you can see my secret here. So we'll be not activating this account because you could also just use my secret, so my secret numbers here, and we import them into your sum app. So then you have access to this account. But since it won't be play, putting funds on it, it doesn't matter. But just so you know, it's because I'm right now sharing my secret with you, with my YouTube followers, or also with YouTube viewers, and you shouldn't ever do that. <laughs> If you intend to use it as a as a account, eight one. So like I said, you have to do it for all the numbers, and eight three. Finally, so now I'm done, and my account got created. So this is not right now my public address, and I can click on next, and now I can and I will click on standard. So you, I can also put an extra account on that account, but it won't because it's already exhausting enough. So my new my new account. All right, so I'm ready to go. So I can, you can see here my public address, so I can also share it with you. So now you can send funds to this account and you would activate it. So so each account has a minimum reserve of 20 XP when you activate it. So I can go to events and see what happened here. I can go to home. As you can see, the profile will come soon. And right, so that's the basic functionality. So th now you have it. Now you can sign transactions on your phone. It's very simple and very easy. And you can also scan your QR code if you want to connect, for example, to XOP Toolkit. So let's have the last case. So for example, let's say, you, like I said, your phone, uh, uh, you change your phone, so you want to switch your phone. The example is not there anymore. So, so, so all of that is gone, more or less. So we'll un uh, de uninstall it and install it again. So it's basically the same effect. So we'll just, again, just go to xam.app. We'll go to the website, xam.app. And I'll we'll just click down here. Yep. Okay, so we'll install it again. And we'll see now that my account is gone. So it's basically like the same as, a, let's say this is now, now I've got the iPhone 10 and not the iPhone 7 anymore. So let's say it's, it's I've got a new phone, like I said. So now I would have to start with all of that again. I would have to set a, pa a passcode. Like I said, the passcode is not relevant to your XOP account, just for accessing it from your phone. So now I would have to wait a little bit again. So it's the process repeats. Um, but you do already then have an account, and in this case, you would just have to import your old account. So, like I said, that's a software wallet. Okay, so yeah, this will take a while again, so checking all of that. Um, in the meantime, I will also highlight that, for example, what if you want to import your XAM account into Atomic or Exodus, for example, then you would have to translate this number matrix back into a family seed. So, or um, this can be a little bit more tricky. I think there's also a tool for that, but I will just continue here quickly. Um, right. 
Right, there is a tool for that, so we will also publish a tool how you can convert um, the secret numbers to the family seed, so there's a live version, you can also launch it locally. So there's also a website how we, how we can, so very important to be in the right website, because otherwise this could be also a fake website, but this one is a real one, but just be cautious that you don't lightly enter that, so you can also see it here, but in my case it doesn't matter. So now I will translate, okay, uh, I will remove the uh, spaces here, because it doesn't like it. Okay, this might take a while again, so just paste it there, paste it again. So this is going to be a little bit annoying. Maybe we'll also just go to a website to remove the spaces, but no, nah, never mind. So I will in the meantime also just click on that again. So again, copy and paste. Yeah, it was a bad idea putting spaces in there, but whatever. Okay. Like I said, you will have written it down and not, or if you have it digitally, like I said, please only have it local on your computer and encrypt the file. The multiple tools you can encrypt it, you can just also use BitLocker of Windows. And right, and now I've converted the um, the secret numbers into a family C. Now can you also use that one here? Okay, this is also a format, so this also is like the equivalent of that one here. So you can choose what you store. You can either store that one or that one. It basically um, is, it represents the same. But now we can confirm. And now I'm able to just click on add account. And now I don't want to create a new account. I can import an existing account. Again, I want to gain full access. And now I can enter the secret numbers, but it's exhausting. I will now do it with the family seat. As we know, this one represents the same as that one here, so we'll just use the family seed now, copy and paste it, and everything is simple. <laughs> so now I've got access to the same account here, and I imported it again with full access, and I will call it main. So I hope I didn't click too fast here, um, but again, like I said, so now I import that account again. So that's basically how the sum app works in the events you have all the transactions of your account. And like I said, it's a non-custodial wallet. I really like the app. It's very intuitive and very simple to use, basically. You just have to get, a, so you can also, for example, so now if I count full access, but it could also, for example, add an account uh, with only read-only access. For example, you want also to have, uh, to list your account, for example, let's say you have a XAM wallet and you has, have your first wallet there, but let's say also have a Ledger on S and a wallet there. So in this case, for example, you could say, okay, I don't want to import my mnemonic from Ledger because it wouldn't be wise because uh, because like the most secure thing is Ledger never asks when your mnemonic is stored locally there and uh, you don't want to so uh, you don't want to risk that and just want to stay safe more or less because it's also secure if you would import it but never mind then you could say well but I still want to see check the balance from time to time on my Ledger never asks so you could just or we'll just take a random address now you could just take the address of the Ledger Nano S, so the account address of the Ledger Nano S, just copy that one then. So I will be just going to XOP scan now and just copying a random address. So let's just quickly see. So the last closed ledger is that one here, and it was sent from this address, so we'll just copy this address here. And I just could say I want to import an ex uh, existing account, but I go to read only mode. So then it will just paste the one here and go to next and call it Ledger Nano S. So you can call it whatever you want to, but it will just call it Ledger Nano S in this case. And you can see, oh yeah, that one is my Ledger Nano S account. And it's 55 uh, XOP on it. It can't send XOP on anything. So in, a May, so in this account, if you have activated, it will be send and receive and stuff like that. But I will just be able to see what happened here. And I can go to, to the events, what happened here. So this account uses the DAX functionality quite a lot. For example, let's say I have another account, which I also want to add in read-only mode. I can go to import existing accounts, say read-only, and enter the XOP address again. So let's just look for another account, which maybe does payments here. For example, that one, I guess. Um, I will copy the address again, co copy and paste it in there, G and it's co I'm going to call it change now account, why not? Oh, okay, I can't, okay, I'm just going to call it change now then, 
Alright, let's go. And now you can see also the balance on this account. And you can see here what happened here. That there was a transaction uh, to a stake. So you can see here from change to stake. And I can see, see also the details here. So in the events tab. So everything that happened, all the payments that happened, for example, today. So these there are lots of payments on it. So alright, so like I said, I hope you like so I hope you liked the video. I hope my explanations were now more clearly how you can get started with the exam map and how you can also import the exam map after you've changed phone and how basically all of it works. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.